Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Cass. Today I wanted to make a cool little drawing. Yesterday I had a beautiful pint of beer that I took a really cool photo of and I thought it would be nice to make a watercolor drawing of it. I also thought it would be fun to discuss some watercolor techniques because it's hard to fit in a lot of information into a 15 minute painting video. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to make a little drawing and just talk about some techniques that I have found helpful. I want you to understand that I am not an educated watercolor painter. Everything that I've learned about watercolor painting, I've learned just by trial and error and exploration because I love colors and it's a fun medium to work with. Today I'd like to talk about some intuitive watercolor techniques. What I mean by that is simply basic techniques used in a mindful way to create expressive paintings, not photographic copies. I am not a realistic painter in any way. I consider myself an expressive painter. I do not do photorealism. So today I'm going to give you some pointers on how to use watercolors to create beautiful personal masterpieces. First thing is the drawing. I take my time to perfect my drawing, erasing everything unnecessary with my favorite gum eraser, which is an essential. And if you don't have one, you need one. That's because gum erasers do not produce any eraser dust or shavings. They do not smudge and you can knead them into any shape you need to get into those eeny weeny miniature little corners. So if you don't have a gum eraser, get one. I usually just start out with graphite to make my primary drawing. Sometimes I make a final drawing in colored pencil over top of the graphite drawing and erase the graphite. And sometimes I just leave it at the graphite like I'm going to do today. That all depends on the kind of drawing that I'm making. Once I'm totally satisfied with my drawing, it's time for a first wash. I like to make my first coat wet and wet, starting with a layer of clear water. I block in the main values and blot highlights and lighter areas to make sure that I still have light, medium, and dark tones. You always have to remember that your lightest areas must stay clean the entire duration of your drawing. However, that being said, don't be intimidated by that either. Get yourself some white gouache for your finishing touches. White gouache will be your best friend for tweaking highlights in the final stages and things like that because gouache is much like watercolor, but it is opaque. So it will sit right on top of that watercolor and it will not become translucent. I almost always do my final touches with white gouache just to fix up those highlights where any watercolor might have started to encroach upon those borders. Now you see here I'm blocking in tones in my first wash in the background and I'm really just making loose brush strokes to block in those areas. I'm not trying to make fine lines. I'm not trying to carefully blend. I'm just blotting all over those darker areas and filling in tones. Because I'm working wet and wet, those blocked in areas will soften as the water disperses and the paper dries. The amount of time that you can spend on this stage really depends on uh, the kind of paper that you're using. Uh, the humidity, the some, uh, to some degree the paint you're using as well, but as long as you can keep that paper hydrated, you can keep using these wet and wet te techniques to block in the values behind your primary subject. Here I'm hardening the horizon line behind with that same gray that I did the whole background with. I'm going to do something fun with the foam on the top of my beer glass here. I'm going to use salt. Salt is a really neat tool when you're working with watercolor. You can get really cool textures with it. All you need to do is sprinkle regular salt into your wet watercolor paints and let it dry undisturbed. And then after, you can just brush the salt off, but it will leave you with a really neat speckly texture. And it's, it's special. It's fun to use for all different kinds of things. And the paint that I'm going to put underneath my salt here is obviously gray and a little bit of an aqua color. It's going to give a cool effect in the head of the beer. I'm going to let a couple of grains of salt fall above the glass as well to give the top of the glass an effervescent look. Now I want to make sure that there's no salt on any other part of my drawing before I continue. 
and I'm gonna make a nice wash on my glass with yellow and I'm gonna start working on those values. I'm doing the same thing. I'm blocking in values and blotting with a paper towel and with my dry paintbrush to fill in the primary tones. This is a really versatile kind of painting. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and you can play with it a lot. Watercolor paints will become hydrated again and so you can keep playing with washes, keep playing with different quantities of color. Experiment both with using wet and wet techniques and letting your wash dry and putting a new layer over top of it. This kind of experimentation is really the only way that you will get a real feel for how you want to paint your pictures. So I'm paying really close attention here to the faceting on this beer mug. Because having accurate lighting on those glass facets and in the reflection is going to really go far towards making this a lifelike drawing. Right now, as you can see, I'm only using one color to fill in all of the values in the glass. I'm using a golden yellow. Later on, you're going to see I'm going to use a pale brown and a mid-brown as well, alternately with the yellow to build up those values. Even if a subject is yellow, use many colors to build the yellow that you want specifically. Even if your subject is red and you have red paint, don't be satisfied with the factory red paint that you have. This will make sure that every color in every one of your paintings will be unique and that really will show through. Look hard at your subject and think seriously about what colors you see, what tones you see. Think seriously about where the values lie, where the shadows lie, where is the light coming from. Even as you place subjects for drawing studies, like as I place this beer stein today, I had to consider where the light was coming from and what effect that would produce in my subject. Because my subject is a translucent glass of liquid, the light shines through it. So I chose to place my subject in front of my light so that that yellow light glows through that golden glass of beer. If I had put my subject directly underneath my light source, I would not have get gotten that effect. So you always want to think about those little details, those small differences, when you're setting up your drawings. I'm making sure that the facets on the sides of the glass are the darkest because they're the ones that are going to be most in shadow here. I like using this little angled brush that you see me using here. It's a really awesome brush for getting nice, clean, sharp corners. And you'd be surprised that often it plays the same function as a fine round brush just because of that nice sharp angle of the tip of the brush. And I'll tell you this is not an expensive watercolor brush either. You don't need to spend a fortune on the best brushes. You are better to spend the money that you can on the brushes that you are able to buy and take good care of them. I would even go a step further and say you are better to buy one middle of the road brush and a pot of brush conditioner than buy one or even two higher quality brushes. Because there's no substitute for learning to care for your brushes and you take care of those brushes and they will serve you for a very long time. It's true, supplies come to the end of their lives and it's the same thing with brushes. You will find that eventually there will be a brush that you've loved for many years but it no longer holds color like it should and you will know that it's at the end of its life. However, if you clean your brushes and condition them regularly, I guarantee you that you will extend the life of each brush. So here, as you can see, I'm developing my background. I'm using a dark blue to develop these washes. And just like before, I'm not taking too much care to be too precise. In this drawing, I want this beautiful pint of ale to be the main 
star. I don't really want people to look too much at the background, and I want my background to be nice and smoky and diffused. I'm not going to pay too much attention to my background. Yes, I want to develop the values back there, but I do not want to bring my audience's eye to my background. I want it to rest on the highlights of that beautiful golden glass of ale. I'm going to use my angle brush again in the background to establish my horizon line, which is going to be the darkest part of my background. At this point, I'm thinking about how much I want to push that background back, how dark I want it to be back there, how bright I want my glass to look, and also that's going to change how I finish the painting of the glass as well. Because the deeper the shadows in the background, the deeper the dark tones and the reflection of my glass are going to have to be. And I can't forget that shadow to highlight ratio when finishing my drawing. Now that I've established the main values everywhere, I really need to take a close look at my subject and make sure that I'm blocking in those basic tones properly. Because I want to fix any errors in here, any imbalances, before I start fine-tuning anything. I basically want to make sure that all of the values in the fastening of the glass are all done before I start doing the little fiddly reflections in the base and the handle of the glass. I encourage you guys to do studies like this if you're interested in painting with watercolors because they can show you a lot about your subject, about your tendencies, about proportions, and you can learn a lot just through experience by making little everyday studies like this. It's quite amazing what objects in our everyday lives have a great deal of beauty all on their own and it's special to be able to harness that beauty and every drawing is an opportunity to learn more about your craft and i don't want to say perfect it but i will say hone it try to stretch your artist's muscles Think about something that you want to practice drawing and draw it not once, oh, but two or three times, maybe five times. Set yourself a goal and think, I want to paint my morning coffee. I'm going to paint it once a day for a week. And then at the end of that week, look at your seven drawings or even your four or five drawings that you were able to make feasibly during your week. And I guarantee that you will have learned something about the way that you want to make art. And equally importantly, how you look at the world. Today we're talking about watercolor techniques, but I encourage you to do drawings and paintings like this with all different kinds of media. There are a lot of media that are really inexpensive and easily accessible. And they produce beautiful results. I'm talking about colored pencil chiefly. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome medium for making studies. Colored pencil, gouaches, watercolor paints. These are the bread and butter for the economy painter. India ink is one of my favorites as well. You can use one pot of India ink for years and produce beautiful, beautiful, beautiful paintings. I encourage you to look at everyday objects in your life and think, oh, this is a beautiful bell pepper, maybe I'll paint it today. My cappuccino was very beautiful, maybe I'll paint that today. Do you have a beautiful orange in your lunch? Rip it open, draw a picture of it, and then eat it. Draw and paint as many things that you see as you can, and your art will become richer for it. Now my drawing is almost done here, and when I am finished with all of the shadows and the highlights in the handle of the glass and in the base of the glass where they're the most complex, that's when I'm going to kick into finishing touches mode. In this drawing, my finishing touches are going to be made solely with white gouache. I'm going to use them like I discussed before to clean up all of my highlights, but there are other things that I like to use for finishing touches, and I'm going to talk about them a little bit now before I'm done. One of them is colored pencil. 
you can make very very nice finishing touches on a lot of different kinds of drawings with different colored pencils. You can sharpen up lines, fix dark shadows deep into corners. It's really 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 easy to use colored pencils to fine-tune a watercolor drawing. Another excellent media for doing this is India ink. No black watercolor will be black like India ink is black. If you are making a drawing and you have deep dark shadows or dark solid lines that you just cannot make as dark and profound as you want, reach for your pot of India ink. Make sure that your watercolor is fully dry first, but then take your India ink and use that with a very, very, very fine brush to fix any of your dark, dark, dark tones. Be careful doing this, however, because India ink is not forgiving like watercolor is forgiving. However, it will still give you the most beautiful black tones that you will ever see to finish a watercolor drawing. My last favorite tool for finishing a watercolor drawing I'm using right now, and it is just my gum eraser. I love my gum eraser so much because I can use it to finish blotting off little bits of graphite that are still visible after my watercolor painting is done. So my gum eraser and my lovely white gouache are the two finishing touch helpers that I'm going to be using to finish this drawing today. Now when my drawing is perfectly, perfectly, perfectly dry, I can go ahead and brush that salt off. Now when you use salt to texture watercolors like this, don't be afraid if it seems to be a little stuck to your drawing. Generally, a stiff brush will clean up that salt like nobody's business. See, I get a nice fluffy effervescent look to the head of my beer because of that salt. And it's colored by the gray and the aqua colors that I poured the salt onto. Now that's it for my drawing today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that these tips and techniques will help you a lot in your own journeys. I'll see you next time.